So on the homework, we made a little chart for figuring out how many heads or how many not heads, maybe even, were possible when flipping a coin specifically four times. So that's what this is asking about. For example, number one, what is the probability of getting exactly one hit on the first flip? Uh, now this one is not talking about all four flips, right? Just the first flip. Yeah, now if you put in a percentage, you could say 50%. Uh, so we can say one half as well as a fraction. Or yes, we can say 50%. Second question here, what is the probability of getting one head on the first and second flips? So this one would be heads and then getting heads, right? So let's take a gander at this. So on the first flip you could get heads, and then on the second flip you could get heads, right? But on the first flip, if you got heads, the second flip could have been tails, right? But maybe the first flip was tails, and then the second one heads. Maybe the first one was tails, and the second one tails, like these, right? So we can see out of these that there's four possible outcomes, and only one of them has heads on the first flip, and also the second flip, one. So yeah, that would be 25% up in count. So now let's consider three flips. Now this one wants the probability of getting one head on the first, second, and third flips. So for example, you may have gotten heads, then heads, then heads, maybe heads, then heads, then tails. And then maybe you got heads, then tails, then heads. Maybe you got heads, tails, and then tails. You guys kind of see a pattern there? Yeah. Right there, I hope you guys do. Right, and nah. Uh, this pattern will continue, and this, in this case, just for three flips, though. And this would be all the options we have if we flipped it three times. Now, once again, we look and we can see there's eight possible outcomes. And how many of these have heads on the first, second, and third flips? Just this one right here. Well, that's one out of eight, which is 12.5%. How do we get that? We divided one divided by eight and then multiplied that value by 100 to get the percent. Now we're looking at heads on all four flips. So, yeah, we got to expand this out. And, yeah, some of you guys noticed the pattern already, which is great, all right? So, you know, there's going to be 16 outcomes. How do we know that? Yeah? Because of the pattern, it goes 2, 4, 8, 16. Bam. You guys see that? We're looking at the denominators there specifically, right? So, you can see up in here, it's gone 2, 4, 8. And so, the next one should be 16th. Let's just confirm it by looking at the list of all of them, which list is still smaller than the one with the uh, rolling the dice stuff. Like these, then we alternate heads, 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 and then maybe tails. Perhaps you get heads, heads, tails, and heads. Maybe you get heads, heads, tails, and tails. And we're just going to continue this pattern until we get all of them. Right now we think they're 16, right? That is tossing a heads first. Next up, what if we toss the tails first? Well then, perhaps you get tails, heads, heads, heads. Tails, heads, heads, tails. And we continue. And there we go. As it turns out, as we can see right here, there are a total of 16 possible outcomes. How many of them have heads on all four flips, though? one. So if we were to figure out the percentage right here, 1 divided by 16 times 100, bam. Now here's something else that you guys probably noticed on these, is not only were we multiplying the denominator by 2 each time, so if we tossed it 5 times for example, then what would we expect the next denominator to be? 32, 32 right? That is excellent. Now that's something that we hopefully would notice from multiplying the denominator by 2 is that it also cuts the percentage in half. So if we were to cut the 6.25 in half, 
and get a 1 32nd, then you should get something like 3.125 right there, okay? So this is excellent, and that would be the pattern that we see emerging up in here. Uh, now this may seem a little redundant, that's because it is, but we may look at it slightly different. Either some of you guys notice that the denominator is being multiplied by 2 each time, or the percent is being divided by 2. Both are legitimate answers for these. So after two flips of the coin, what is the probability of getting at least one head? Um, so that means you could get two heads, right? Which means what's, it's kind of asking as well, what's the probability of not getting any tails? Let me see if I, all, yeah, thank you. All tails. That seemed like it came out wrong. Yeah, what's the probability of getting all tails? And then we just take the opposite of that, okay? So tossing this four times, if we look back, this was the four options that we had, and only one of them has only tails, which means the other three out of the four have at least one head, which would also be 75%. After three flips of the coin, what is the probability of getting at least one head? All right, so from this list, <clears throat> Uh, at least one heads. Well, you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven that have one heads. Seven out of eight possible outcomes. You have Which is, so you got 87.5% of tossing at least one head if you were to toss a coin three times. Yes, that is correct. After four flips of the coin, we can see that only one of these, this one right account, has only tails, so that means all the other ones have tails, uh, heads rather, and there were 16 total possible uh, outcomes right here. And take away the one and you got 15 out of them, which gives you 93.75% chance of tossing at least one heads if you were to toss the coin all four times. So what do we notice about the probabilities in questions 6 through 8? There's a couple things, hopefully, that we notice, specifically in the fractions. That is that the denominator is one more than the numerator each time, right, account. So the question is, why does that happen? Why is that always happening? Because there's only one option that would produce only tails, which means all of the other options have um, at least one hedge. There we go. These probabilities in 1 through 10, what type of probabilities are these? Anyone remember? <laughs> They're theory experimental, yeah. What is it? Come on, okay. All right, yeah. All right, let's, let's look back at the definitions. I'm not going to write them down, but theoreticals is when we don't actually, in this case, toss the coin. Did we toss the coin? No, we did not. Therefore, it's theoretical. Experimental is when you have to actually toss the coin. There we go. <laughs> We did talk about fair games last time and how to determine if a game is fair. So let's, let's play this game, Radical, and then we will determine if it is a fair game and we'll answer the questions along the way. So this is the addition game. What we're going to do is we're going to take two die, we're going to toss them, and then we will determine, based on this experiment, what, uh, if this game is possibly fair or not. All right, before we play this game, let's just look. This qu first question, do you think the addition game will be fair? No. Uh, so the idea is if you roll the dice, someone gets a point if you roll odds, someone gets a point if you roll evens, perhaps. We're just going to keep track of them as we roll them, and we will do it 36 times. But do you guys think this will be a fair game? No. All right, why, 
Some of you guys say yes or no. No. Now we need to know why. That's very good. We're going to find out then, based on what was said right account, um, if this game is actually fair or not. So right now we're going to say no. And then we will see. We will see, based on the experiment, if it is fair or no. All right, we got to do this 36 times. We'll just keep track using the tally marks on at these. And as we roll an even, we'll put a mark up in here. And as we roll an odd, we'll put a mark up in here. So, let's get this started. I will roll the first. There we go. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Tampering! Okay, so we got a two and a six. That results in an eight, which is even. All right, the next one is a niner, so that would be odd. All right, so these are our results. We got 12 evens and 24 odds, okay? So does it look like this was a fair game? Yeah, for the wrong reason. Well, our answer was right, that we assumed that it was not, right? Based on this experiment, we would say definitely not a fair game. Now we're going to figure out if it actually is a fair game or no here in just a moment. But let's go ahead and figure out the probability of odd and evens. So let's look at the evens first. Very good. That would be 12 because we got 12 evens out of 36 rolls, which if we simplified would be one third, which is also the same as 33%. Now, yeah, you could show it repeats, and that's okay. The odds. However, we got 24 odds out of 36 rolls, which also simplifies to two-thirds. And if we rounded it to the nearest percent, it would be 67%. Now notice if we add the percents, what does it add up to? 100%, which is, should uh, include all of the rolls, 100% of the rolls. Or if we added the fractions, two-thirds plus one-thirds is three-thirds, which is all of the rolls. Okay, so those are our probabilities. Are these experimental or theoretical? Experimental. Why are they experimental? Yeah, because we actually rolled the dice, right? Looking back at the data you gathered from the probability experiment, something like that, what was the theoretical probability of rolling an odd sum or an even sum from that data? Let's look at what the data was, though. Uh, we're going to do this a little bit differently than we did in class. So this is just the theoretical probability. We're going to use an area model this time. So we got uh, a row of values up in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And for one dice, the possibilities of rolling, uh, the only outcomes you could have gotten for one of the dice is a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, or a six. That would be one of the die. The other die also had six possibilities. And those possibilities would have been one, two, three, four, five, or a six. Now, we are going to be additioning these. So if I rolled a one and a one, what would the outcome be? One. Two. Because we're adding them, right? Yep. What if I rolled a one and a two? two. Three, three. Four. Five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Well, we got to stop at twelve. Uh, let's fill in the rest of the table. Now, all the numbers in red, right account, were made from taking the column number three and adding it to the row number four to get this seven, right account. Or maybe two and three, which gives us this five, right account. Okay? Now, uh, 6 plus 6, right down here. 6 and 6 is this 12. So we got the 12. It was hard, though. We had to use our fingers, even. So, um, all the red is all of the outcomes on it, these. So when it says the probability of odd, now this is all theoretical, right? Because in this case, we wouldn't actually be throwing the die. We can see for odds, there are 36 possible outcomes. 6 for each row, 6 rows each. 
So the question is, how many of these are odds? Well, we could go through and count them. One, two, uh, sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Eighteen of these, thirty-six are odds, which gives us, at the same time, fifty percent chance. What about evens? How many of those are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, eighteen. Bam. 18 of them, out of 36, which also is 50%. Now, based on the experiment that we did, based on this experiment, we found very different values, right? 67% and 33%. Now, law of averages says is the more we play this, the more likely we are to get closer to this 50-50 stuff, right? There were some times where we got maybe three or four evens in a row, but there just were some times where we got like six or seven odds in a row right, right up a count. So experimental probabilities are not always exactly the same as theoreticals, but sometimes, sometimes they would be. So the question is, do you think this is a fair game? No. Yes. Now in practice, perhaps not, but theoretically, the answer is yes. Because before anyone ever tosses the die, you have a 50-50 chance of getting either odds or even, which does make it fair. Bam. Well, the answer is yes. You have a 50-50 chance of getting odd or even before you toss the dice. Well, that's 50% for either one, right? Not a 100% chance. Uh, uh, Oh. It's, it's kind of like a ratio. We can say 50% chance either uh, too. Um, so what do you guys think? If, if we change this to multiplication, do you think it would be the same? That is what we will find out. So for the multiplication game, all we're going to do is we're going to be tossing two die, and we're going to be multiplying those two numbers together to get an answer, all right? Now the question is, do you think this will be a fair game? So in other words, do odd and even have the same chance at winning? What do you guys think? I heard more yeses, so we'll just put yes for various reasons, right? So that's something that we probably would think, right? You got an even number of evens and an even number of odds, or the same number of evens and odds. So maybe, just maybe, they would give us the same probabilities, theoretically speaking, which would make it a fair game. All right, so I'm gonna take the first attempt just so you guys can see what the heck to do on at these. So I'm just gonna roll the die like at these, and I got a two and a three, so if I multiply them, I got six. Yes. Which are even. Even Stevens. Alright, this is the results to our games. This, this is what we got. 36 total rolls. So for the evens, let's find the probability that we got for evens. Alright, can someone tell us the probability that we got evens that we got right now? So we got 13, but how many times did we roll the die? 36. There we go, 23 out of 36. Then someone tell us the probability of odds. So this is what we got. Uh, this, by the way, is the answer to number two. Uh, are these probabilities experimental or theoretical? They're experimental because we actually did throw the die, right? All right, well, looking at our data that we have right, right here, would you guys say that this game is fair? No, I Probably not. <laughs> Probably not a fair game because in this case there were 10 more evens than the odds. How will the sample space for the multiplication game be the same and or different from the addition game? So we can show the sample space using the same uh, area model that we used for the addition game, which we're going to show you guys right now. All right, so we're going to set this up the same way. We're going to make a table. So for the first die, the possible answers were 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and a 6. 
Now that's just for this first die. For the second die, you also had the possibilities of one, two, three, four, five, and a six. All right, the operation we're using right here is multiplication. All right, so for this first space, I've got one, one times one, which is one. So I'm just taking the number in the column and multiplying it by the number in the row. So this one would be two times one. The next one is three times one is three, four times one is four, five, a six, and for two, two times one is two, two times two is four, and so forth. All right, so the numbers in black to start each row and column are the results that we can get from rolling a die. The red numbers are what we get after multiplying the corresponding row and column. So these are the actual results from these. How many total results are there, Radhikyam? Well, we got six rows and six columns. So there'd be 36 total outcomes. So on, on four, when it asks for the probability of odd, we know that there's 36 possible outcomes. The question is how many of these are odd? Well, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I got nine. So nine out of 36, which is the same as one fourth, meaning that you got a 25% chance at rolling an odd. So the question is, just looking at this, if you've got a 25% chance of odd, does it look like it's going to be a fair game? No. no. All right. So if you want to make money, make people, no, actually don't, don't gamble, so never mind. All right, well, if 9 out of the 36 are odd, then how many of the 36 are evens? 27. All right, good. 27, which simplify to three-fourths, which is the same as 75%. So do you think the multiplication game is a fair game? No. Bam. This is why it is not fair. Because when evens are multiplied by evens or odds, you still get an even answer. Only when you multiply odds by other odds do you get odd values. So the question is, on number three, how will the sample space for this multiplication game be different than the addition game? Is that uh, we have more evens in here than we do odds.